definitely not. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that any time's good to do this. Mm. Um, and I think as you get older, sometimes you can get a little bit less braver. Mm. But I think getting out there and being brave and yeah. showing to you, showing yourself that you can do these things yeah. is a really positive yeah. force, yeah. positive thing. Um, for you and the people around you. So I definitely don't think it's too late for anybody yeah. to travel. Hi, my name is Jo Mosley. I'm a paddleboarder and an author about paddleboarding. And I'm here today with Fiona from Max Adventure. And I've been on a Max Adventure holiday, so it's just fantastic to be able to speak to Fiona. So Fiona, hi. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor. Um, Tell us a little bit about um, yourself. I know you come from the Lake District, don't you? Yes, that's right, yeah. So I was born in a little village called Lampler on the western edge of the Fells. Um, I grew up there. My parents lived there for many, many years. I've been back many times. And as a child, I literally used to walk from the house. I used to ride my bike up onto the fell road. Wow. And then we just used to, I mean, because I went to school with all the farmers, so I knew everybody and everyone who lived locally. And I just used to wander onto the hills. And it was a very natural thing to do. Mm. And, and I always loved it. And mm. I remember picking blueberries as a kid and rolling around on the hills in the snow in the winter. Oh, so, yeah, wow. I mean, I, it, it feels, it's very much home to me, the yeah. lakes. Yeah. Um, and I love Crummock. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful place. So when yeah. I saw that you'd come from there, it was, it was lovely. Yeah. And is it your first time at Kendall Mountain Film Festival? Do you know, I came here many years ago. I was trying to think about when it was. Mm. It was literally when they only showed films yeah. at the Brewery Arts Centre. I 15, maybe 20 years ago. Something wow. like that. It was a long time ago. Wow. So coming here today, it was yeah. amazing to see how much it's grown. Yeah. And um, how many people are here mm. and you know how much more multidimensional it is than just a, a film, kind of yeah. mountain film festival these days. Yeah. And um, really very vibrant. Yeah. And your talk was packed out wasn't it yeah well I was surprised you know you always think oh who's going to come and listen to me but yeah it was great to have people um to come along and listen Mm. so I I I talked about traveling on your own Mm. and um and how companies like Max Adventure can can support that and particularly Mm. if you're a woman yeah which it's harder I think in some ways to Mm. to sort of feel safe when you're traveling um but one of the nice things about the talk was we got lots of questions at the end yeah so it was really lovely a to lot hear of enthusiasm yeah, yeah. so can you just tell us a little bit about Max and mm. you know what why why did you come to Kendall and, and yeah. how's the response being yeah sure so um Max Adventure we run self-guided walking and cycling holidays mm-hmm. so we basically are the enabler mm. for people who want to go off on adventures mm-hmm. uh, we provide uh, the trip design and the information about the trips um, the route planning, the route notes, which you mm. deliver via an app. Yeah. And we're there 24-7 on the end of a phone if there's a problem. Um, so uh, we operate tours all over the UK and Europe. And we thought coming to Kensal would be a really great way for us to sort of raise our brand profile here mm-hmm. in the UK. Um, we've we've been around for about 20 years, mm-hmm. uh, but I think a lot of people still don't know who we are. Yeah. So this seemed like a great opportunity to sort of meet the type of people who come on our on our trips. Yeah. And tell them a bit more about ourselves and and meet people who'd not heard of us. Yeah. Um, and I think. The team have felt the last few days to be a resounding success. Brilliant. Met lots of new people. I was on the stand today chatting yeah. away, and it was really great to meet people who'd not heard of us before, but they definitely knew what we were doing. They were yeah. interested in talking about the West Highland Way or walking in the Alps. So definitely, it's been a really good match, I think, yeah. in terms of the, the people here for what we do. Yeah. What do you think some of the barriers are to solo adventuring, perhaps for a, for a woman, because that's what you talked about? Yeah, I think, first of all, I'm worrying about being safe. Yeah. And um, I, I guess I referenced that today in my talk about, mm. you know, um, I think skills in the mountains are really important if you're going to go on a, um, a wild adventure. Yeah. And, you know, doing a course with somebody like Plassey Brennan um, or Glenmore Lodge in Scotland yeah. is a really great thing to do. They run loads of brilliant courses for learning to navigate. Um, but I think doing your research is important and having a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the nice things about traveling by yourself is that you can change your plan, yeah. but it still means you should have one anyway. Yeah. And, you know, um, making sure that you know where you're going and that other people know what you're doing as well, I think is really important. Yeah. So, you know, people can check in um, and you check in with other people regularly as well. Mm-hmm. So everybody knows that you're safe. And what about the benefits of traveling solo as a woman? Um, I think there are lots. 
Uh, first of all, I think that it's, it, the thing I enjoy the most is the headspace. Mm. You know, I have a busy life, mm. you know, I think most of us have busy lives. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've, we've never been more connected with the world around us mm. through our phones and our email. And yeah. I mean, staying on top of all of the channels that we communicate <laughs> with each other through is yeah. unreal. So sometimes I actually just like to unplug all of that. Yeah. And I think when you're traveling with other people, you're often interacting with them mm -hmm. and reacting to them mm -hmm. and thinking about them. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're traveling by yourself, you can just please yourself. Yeah. And I think I love walking and walking by myself. It's very meditative, you know, mm. just putting one foot in front of the other. Mm. And, and I think it's when you kind of sort things out in your head. Yeah. Uh, it's not like I go for a walk and sort things out in my head. It kind of happens more subtly yeah. than that. But I think that it's it's a break, you mm -hmm. know, it's a bit of time out for you. Mm. Um, so I think that's one of the big benefits. I think the other thing is it, the feeling of, em of empowerment mm. that you get having sort of navigated your way through a difficult situation or, you know, gone somewhere that was maybe slightly outside of your comfort zone and yeah. managed to do it successfully and had a great time. Mm. You kind of return to life with a greater sense of self-confidence. And I think it's a really positive thing for, for women particularly. Yeah. yeah. And do you find if you're traveling solo, you start chatting to people more? Oh God, yeah. I think, mm. I don't know what it is about traveling by yourself, but, and people, I think, approach you more. You're, yeah. more, you're almost more approachable. Yeah. And I think you're definitely more open to communication with other people when you're traveling on your own. Yeah. You become a bit more more receptive and you know, people don't feel like they're interrupting if, if you were traveling with your partner for example yes. so I think you know everything from sort of like chatting to the waiter in the restaurant when you're having dinner by yourself yeah um, to sort of meeting people along the way in cafes I mean I've met people I've ended up bumping into like day after day after day yeah. um, on my travels and and they've ended up you know becoming people who've almost become friends yeah yeah so yeah. yeah it's a great way to meet people definitely and with the max adventure what would you say the the sort of top two benefits people come away with having been on a max adventure rather than um, a organizing a trip themselves? Um, I think, you know, we take the pain out of the logistics planning. Mm. So that's definitely one thing. You know, we, we you don't have to worry about where your bags are going to be and yeah. if the taxi is going to be I there to pick that. you up. <laughs> I love yeah, that. <laughs> that's something nice, isn't it? You yeah. don't have to think about, oh my God, how am I going to get back tonight? Yeah. We take all of the, all of the sort of like the heavy lifting there yeah. on the logistics, but we're also there on the phone yeah. all the time, 24 seven. So yeah. if you've got a problem, you know there's someone you can call who'll yeah. help you. Yeah. And I think that that's the other big thing that we do that's important, particularly for women traveling on their own. Yeah. There's always someone there to help you out. Yeah. So I'm 60 next year. Which is Congratulations. a big milestone. Thank you so much. A um, big milestone. Um, do you think, I hope I know the answer, but I'll ask you anyway. Do you think it, we're, it's ever too late to, if you've never been on a, on a solo adventure, is, are women too late in their 50s and 60s to, to start? Definitely not. Mm -hmm. um, I think that any time's good to do this. Mm. Um, and I think as you get older, sometimes you can get a little bit less braver. Mm. But I think getting out there and being brave and yeah. showing, to you, showing yourself that you can do these things yeah. is a really positive yeah. force, yeah. positive thing. Um, for you and the people around you. So I definitely don't think it's too late for anybody yeah. to travel. And what about... Um, training for them do mm. you do you have any programs or suggestions in terms of fitness yeah we definitely give some suggestions mm. and some advice I mean I think it very much depends on the type of adventure people are going to choose yeah um, if you're going to go and walk the Camino de Santiago then it's getting used to walking long distances day mm. after day mm -hmm. um, and that's something good that's to, to work up to yeah if you're going to go and walk the Suisse Mont Blanc then you need to get used to walking up and down right a thousand meters of ascent and descent yeah. every day so um, preparing your knees yeah. for that as one ages yeah. is a wise thing to do. Yeah. And walking with poles, I yeah. think, is a good suggestion. And you give all those sorts of tips, Absolutely, yeah. So it's all, so, all round package. Yeah, it's an all <laughs> yeah. round package. We try and make it easy for everyone. Yeah, yeah, so. that's, that's our job. Yeah. 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 And do you have a, an inspirational solo adventuring role model? Um, I do. She's one of my favorite travel writers, Dervla Murphy, Irish lady, sadly passed away not that long mm. ago. Um, and she's done some wild trips, um, riding a bike from, you know, Ireland to Delhi in the 60s, riding through Afghanistan on her own. 
um, and Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she's uh, she, she's travelled all over the world on her own. And, and I was fortunate enough to meet her a few years ago. Wow. Uh, I gave her a lift to an airport. So I had two hours in a car with Derva and she was just great fun. Yeah. And, and brave. Yeah. But I remember, and I said, were you ever scared? And she's like, no, I was never scared. I was never scared. She just, you know, I think she had talked herself out of that in some ways. And she had a very difficult upbringing. And I think that travel for her was an escape. Mm. And for her, it was just this feeling of freedom mm. and release from whatever was going on at home. And, yeah. and I think that that's why she always approached it that way, with this sense of freedom. And travel, it, it always feels like anything's possible, I think, when you're traveling. It's an immensely positive thing to do for yourself yeah. at any and, time. And you bring that back into your life. Oh, definitely. I think it kind of sits with you afterwards, you know, like, yeah, I did this and um, I had such a great time. Um, I mean, of course, you know, we all have had that feeling three weeks after, or three days after a holiday and you feel like you've never been. Yeah. But I think you always kind of hold those memories and those feelings. And um, I I think that's really positive for you, for everyone. And what's been the highlight of your Kendall experience then? Other than speaking on stage to a packed audience. Other than speaking on stage to a very engaged audience. Very which was engaged. Um, I think for me today, um, it's been seeing uh, how many people are still interested in the outdoors. Mm. The numbers are growing all the time. I think that's an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. So it's really great for everybody's health and their mental health. Yeah. Um, it's been very vibrant um, feeling today. It's mm-hmm. been quite fun. Mm. And you know what? I've, bu- I've bumped into quite a few old friends. Oh, and lovely. that's been really lovely. Yeah, that yeah, happens I met at some Kendall. new people too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been very social. Brilliant. I would say. Brilliant. Yeah. And my last question is if somebody is, she's been here, she's loved it, she's listened to people, she's feeling excited, but she's just not sure, what kind of encouragement would you give her? What would you say, yeah, you can, you know, what would the next step be? You can do it, you know, you can do it. And and I think talk to someone like Max, you know, talk to the people out there that enable outdoor adventure and, mm. and travel experiences. Because there's a lot of people out there who want to give advice, they want to help you, mm-hmm. you know, they want to enable you. And, mm. and I think that, you know, they're genuinely, their hearts are... They believe in what we do. We're a very passionate industry, I think, people who work in the outdoors. We mm. genuinely do it because we love it. Mm. And and I think that for people who are worried about doing this type of thing, going on a trip by themselves, there are absolutely people out there who will help you along the way because they care. Brilliant. So. And when you were swimming in Crummock as a little girl and climbing Melbrek and your mum probably never knew where you were. No, she didn't. <laughs> no mobile phone. No mobile phone <laughs> and running through, well, hopefully not running through the bluebells, but yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you ever imagine that your career would take you around the world as it has done? No, never. I mean, it was. Com- I fell into working in the travel industry almost by accident, but I felt very much at home in it right from the very beginning. Um, I've been very lucky. I've been to some amazing places in the world. Um, it's a great industry to be in, travel, mm. adventure, the outdoors. Mm. Um, it's a world of possibilities, I think. Mm. And so, yeah, I had no idea. I still love swimming in Crummock, though. <laughs> yeah. So first stop, the Lake District, and yes, then the world. Absolutely. Well, thank you yeah. so much, Fiona. It's been an absolute joy. Well, thank um, you, And Joe. I hope you've had a really lovely Kendall Mountain Film Festival. Fantastic. Thank you. It's been yeah, a joy to meet you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.